Good afternoon. Welcome to Emory University's Goizueta Business School. On today's web chat, we will be discussing the full-time MBA admissions process. I'm Nicole Hippas, Director of Program Marketing, and I'm joined today by Libby Livingston, Senior Director of Admissions, and Nicole Haydick, one of our full-time MBA students. Before we jump into questions, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, first, this web chat is being recorded in its entirety, so if you have to jump off early or, or miss anything that's said today, don't worry, we will send you the recording uh, via email within about a week. Also, we want this web chat to be as interactive and helpful to you as possible. So if you have any questions at any time, please submit them via the, the web chat window, and we will do our best to address them on air. And with that, I'm going to have the ladies joining me introduce themselves, and then we'll get started with questions. Libby? Hi. Well, welcome. My name is Libby Livingston, and I'm Senior Director of MBA Admissions and looking forward to chatting with you all today to give you some insights into the application process. And I uh, have been here for over 18 years, so I'm excited to share some of my experience through the process with you today. Um, and I'm Nicole Haydeck. I'm a first year MBA student in the full-time program. Um, I'm originally from Denver, Colorado. Um, went to Vanderbilt University for my undergrad and spent the last five years at, in Deloitte's human capital consulting practice. So I was in your shoes just this time last year and I'm happy to answer any questions from a student perspective. All right, and with that, we're gonna dive right in and start talking about interviews. So we get a lot of questions about interviews. Um, it's a key component of the application process. Libby, what would you say is the most important thing a candidate can do to really ace the interview? Sure. So as Nicole said, the interview is a very important part of the admissions process. And we're you know, interested in meeting candidates. Uh, we can, you can do interviews actually on campus as well as uh, meet us in some cities um, is an option. Um, right now, just kind of talking about the process, uh, we do have open interviewing on campus and from now up until our first deadline, which is October 5th, you can actually go online and set up an interview. You just need to have two years of work experience in order to do so. So it gives you an opportunity to come and meet us early before you've even submitted an application. Once you have submitted your application, uh, then it will be by invitation only. And we will do an initial review of your application and offer admission um, interviews. Um, we do interview um, every candidate that we admit into our program. Um, we can you know, render a decision, a deny or waitlist decision without an interview. Um, but the interview is a conversation with uh, me or one of my colleagues on the admissions committee. We also do have some alums that we train here, um, local alums that we train train uh, to help us, assist us with interviews on certain Saturdays. Uh, we just had one during our Super Saturdays, some alums assisted us, and we also have one uh, during round three to assist us with interviews. Uh, both interviews are viewed uh, the same, and uh, the interview is, you know, you want to prepare for it like a job interview. It's going to be a 30-minute conversation, really learning about your work experience, uh, wanting to hear about why you're interested in the MBA and why it goes weta and how you'll contribute. You know, we really want to get a good sense of the fit uh, with Goizueta. We're a very small program and a uh, fit is really key. And, you know, I think that it's important to definitely, uh, you know, anticipate some of the questions you might be asked and prepare, uh, but you don't want to sound too rehearsed. I think this is an opportunity. You have probably a lot of family and friends that are asking you, why are you doing this MBA? You know, take that opportunity to chat with them about why you're investing, you know, the time you know, into doing the degree and why you're interested at Goizueta and what your plans are uh, for your career, uh, because that will assist you in being prepared uh, for this experience. And I think that with the interview, um, it is definitely a key piece, and uh, we look forward to meeting you during the interview process. So for those candidates that aren't local and, and don't have the opportunity to make it to campus for a visit, what opportunities exist for them to, um, to do the interview? Sure. So we do uh, travel to certain cities uh, throughout the fall and in the early, uh, you know, in the new year. And you do have the opportunity to uh, schedule an interview if you've been invited um, in those cities. The, the, you know, they're pretty limited. So if you are interested in meeting us in a city that we're traveling to, you'll want to, uh, you know, respond immediately to, to get a spot. Uh, but if you can't come to campus, we prefer, you know, if you can come to campus. Uh, but if you can't, then we do offer the option to do a web interview. It is something that we can consider. Great, thank you. So Nicole, you were in these shoes a year ago, um, evaluating yeah. programs, going through the application process. 
What did you learn about Gorizueta um, through the interview process? Yeah, so I actually thought it was super important and a, a huge value add that Goizueta interviewed all of their candidates. I was someone that was looking for a smaller program where I could really feel connected um, to my classmates, to my professors. And so just the fact that um, Emory interviewed everybody was alone impressive to me. Um, outside of that, Libby actually interviewed me, um, which I realized that that opened a lot of relationships and doors for me, starting with that interview before I even got to campus. Um, so I thought that it was a great opportunity for me to start building connections before I even started um, the first year at, um, in my MBA program. So as someone who clearly was successful going through the interview process, um, what advice would you give to candidates to prepare for that interview? Yeah, so Libby kind of alluded to this, but I just Googled um, questions that are asked in an MBA interview to just kind of get started and think about what I wanted to say. And a lot of those questions, if you do the same thing that I did, will be, you know, why do you want to get your MBA? Why now is a really important question. I think that is easy to overlook because everybody has had different amounts of experience before they start their MBA. And I also think, what are you going to bring to the classroom that other people maybe aren't? And so I think that, you know, especially in a school like Goizueta, where you have a small community, you know, I have 61 people in my section. And so we all come with very different perspectives. And so I think thinking through how your perspective is different than maybe the other 60 people or 59 in the room is really important to think through. Um, and also your work experience is important. So what skills did you learn in your work life that are going to make you successful in your MBA, but also make you successful in your career post MBA because um, that's important to, you know, how, how is school going to propel you into a successful career? But also, as Libby said, you know, making it all natural, telling your story, being yourself is really important because it is a two way fit. You know, you want to love Goizueta, but, you know, they want to see how you'll fit in the culture too. So it's a two way thing. So Libby, we had a question coming in about the, uh, the interview. Does every applicant who submits an application get interviewed or how are applicants um, selected for interview? So not all applicants are interviewed. So we can, uh, you, know, you know, render a decision, as I mentioned, you know, a deny or a waitlist decision without an interview. Um, but anyone that is gonna be offered admission has an interview. And uh, you know that is something you know when we receive your you know applications, we do an initial review, and we start to make those offers for interviews. Um, but keep in mind that we can offer interviews up until the very end of the round. So if you're not offered Im initially, um, it is something that we're continuing to make offers throughout the round. So for example, our first round is October 5th. The release date is November 30th. We could be sending offers of interviews November 20th. So it's happening throughout the entire process. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, we're gonna move on to program comparison. So we offer two full-time MBA programs, a one-year MBA and a two-year MBA. And we have a lot of prospects who aren't sure which one's the right fit. Um, can you talk a little bit about the differences between the two and what makes someone a good fit for one versus another? So we do have uh, the two-year as well as the one-year. It is important to know that, I mean, the, the one-year program, sometimes people think, oh, it's accelerated, I won't have a full MBA experience. It really is a full MBA experience. And the reason is that um, it starts in May each year, but you do all the core in the summer, but you actually join the rising second year students in the two year program for the fall and the spring and then you graduate. So you have access to all the same uh, faculty and elective offerings as a student in the two year program. So it is definitely a full experience. You have the same number of international uh, you know, trip options as well. Uh, but the key kind of when thinking about, you know, you've got the traditional two year program with has the internship, uh, the one year program, it is for an individual that is very focused in what they want to do in their career. And that the, the question you need to ask yourself is, do I need an internship to do what it is that I want to do? And if the answer is no, or I'm not sure, uh, then definitely consider the one year. You can easily uh, engage with us. Uh, you can connect with us at events, but also um, through, um, you know, online and ask us questions about, you know, based on your experience, would you be a good fit for the one year? We also have some virtual hours that you can connect with us and have a short conversation about your background and if that might be a good option. Um, what's also nice is that you can actually apply to both programs 
on our application. So, uh, you know, you can list the two year as well as the one year to be considered. Um, we do ask if you're applying to a, a second program that you do um, have an additional essay to complete to kind of go into a little bit more detail why you're applying to that additional program. Um, but sometimes, you know, when you're submitting your application, you may not know exactly which program's the best fit for you. You want to consider both, and we give you that opportunity. And then, you know, ideally, you'll get admitted to both programs, and then that can give you more time to make your decision and talk to our career center, talk to, you know, more individuals um, to make your final decision. So, Nicole, you researched both our one-year and two-year MBA. Can you talk a little bit about your decision um, on, on how you evaluated and then which one you decided to pursue? Yeah. So, similar to what Libby said, I am a career switcher. So, I was in um, consulting for five years prior to coming to business school and decided that I wanted to take the opportunity to um, use my MBA to switch careers. And so, I did a lot of research on the one-year versus the two-year and actually thought about applying to both, but then I realized that my application and my value proposition was more related to a career switch. And so the two-year program made a lot of sense for me. Um, but I do think that there is a lot of value in the one year, as Libby said, if, if you kind of know exactly what you want to do. Um, in the two year, I've taken a lot of time to talk to people this semester and figure out what internships I want to apply to. And I feel like an internship is critical for me to figure out what I want to do long term. So that's ultimately why I decided to do the two year. I mean, I think that when you think of the two-year program, I mean, most people that are going into that program are career switchers. Mm -hmm. I mean, not always. Some career enhancers, you know, want to do a two-year program, but, you know, w the career enhancers you see more in the one-year program, kind of building on your past experience um, and, you know, kind of needing to get the MBA and then want to jump back into to the workforce. Great. So let's talk about essays. Um, essays are another hot topic, mm -hmm. uh, an important requirement of any application. Libby, on the, the essays, um, can you talk about how a candidate can use them to really distinguish themselves? So the essays, you know, give you the opportunity to tell your story. And, you know, I encourage you to definitely spend time, you know, on your essays. We can definitely tell, you know, we can kind of see right through if you've taken, you know, an essay that you've done for another school and kind of tried to chop it up to fit our uh, questions. So, you know, take the time that you need to work on your essays. Um, I think it's important to, it's helpful to have looked at the essays before, you know, you do your interview, just so that you're in sync with what you're sharing in your interview as well as in your essays. Uh, the essays, um, we actually have uh, three essays that are required. We have one that focuses on your, you know, kind of your goals and what you want to do. Also a leadership focused uh, essay. And then this year we also, we have a video essay uh, where you can choose from a few options to uh, do a 60 to 90 second uh, video essay, which we're real excited about uh, seeing you this year in the, uh, the essay process. We also have an additional kind of information that you can submit. It's in the past been called our optional essay, but you don't need to do an essay. Uh, you can actually do bullet points and that's why we've uh, changed it to kind of additional information. And that is where, you know, really if you get to the end of your application and you feel there's some information that you haven't had the opportunity to share with us, that you can, um, you know, let us know. And I think that examples of that would be maybe some gaps in your work experience or you want to kind of share with us why you selected the recommenders that you selected. Um, maybe you had a bad semester and you want to talk about why your grades were low. Again, it can be bullet point format. Uh, is great. And then also the essay that I mentioned previously that if you are applying to an additional program, and in addition to being able to apply to our two year or one year, you can actually apply to a third uh, program. So if you're also considering maybe our evening part time program, you can apply up to actually three programs. Um, so there is that additional essay regarding. Uh, you know, if you're applying to an additional program. But, you know, I think with the essays, you want them to be clear and concise. You want them to be straightforward. You want them to be sincere. I think that, you know, we really want to, you know, just learn more about you. And, you know, I think that this is an opportunity to, to share that information. And, you know, you want to proof it. You want to make sure that you've got Goizueta in there and not another school name. These are small little things that just by proofing you can see. I think it's also nice if you, you know, are interested to, you know, kind of see if you've really been able to, to share your your thoughts um, and everything, including everything, you know, give the uh, essay to someone that you know without the question, without the prompt, and see if they can tell you what the question is. Um, because it is important to, you know, complete the questions that we're asking within the word limits that we've provided. So we have quite a few questions coming in about the video essay. <laughs> um, they are looking for tips, sure. um, questions around, is it formal, informal? 
um, attire, right. those sorts of things. Please well, share. Those are great <laughs> questions. I, you know, it, this is new and we're excited about this. I think my biggest tip when it comes to this video essay is just be natural and be yourself. The last thing that we want to see is someone reading uh, something in the background for this essay. So I think that, again, the, the topics are something that you should easily be able to talk about and, you know, definitely you want to prepare. But, you know, be yourself and, you know, I think that you, you don't have to be in business attire. I think that you can, I mean, you want to look professional, but I don't think you have to have a suit on. Uh, you do need a suit for interviews, uh, but, <laughs> but for this essay, I think that you could, you know, it's really just getting a sense of your personality and learning something, you know, kind of about you personally is, uh, is you know, just to be natural. And to clarify, the video essay is required. It is required. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. So, um, Nicole, you had to do the written essays. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how you use them to really talk about yourself and your career goals beyond just what you've done in the past, but what you're looking um, to get out of an MBA experience? Yeah, so I actually really liked writing my essay. Um, it sounds weird, and I'm sure some of you listening probably think that I'm joking, but I'm not. Um, I think it was a really great way for me to take a step back and think, why am I applying to business school? and where do I see myself headed after business school? Um, and what makes me a good leader to be someone that Goyes Weta would see as successful post business school? And so I actually looked at it as a little bit of an elevator pitch of, hey, this is what I'm good at, this is my experience, and this is what I'm trying to do and how business school can help me get there. And I had a lot of really close family and friends that did a lot of um, review on it. My dad, some people that actually didn't know me well um, review it, which I thought was really important because they don't have a bias for um, anything from your past. They're just looking at it as if they were an admissions director reading my essays. And so I thought that was a really important thing for me to do. And I actually still use my business school essays um, when I'm applying for jobs and cover letters. I use pieces of it because it really is just um, your elevator pitch and, and why you think that you're a, a good candidate. All right. So we have a lot of questions coming in. Some of them are very uh, specific and some of them are more um, oriented to aspects of the program. We're going to do our best to get to those, but first we're going to start out talking about the application process. Um, and if we have time at the end, we'll, we'll dive a little bit deeper into some of these other questions coming in. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, the application process. We receive a lot of applications. Um, we are intentionally small school, so um, we are very selective and we talk about the right fit candidate. Can you talk about how the admissions committee, how do you really evaluate and get to know candidates and what is that right fit mean or look like? Mm -hmm. So as you said, I mean, we are small by design and, you know, our two-year program has 160 to 180 students. The one-year program has 50 to 60 students. So we are, you know, trying to, you know, craft a class that's going to make conversations and team projects and, you know, just really a dynamic experience in the classroom for the students. And, you know, it's important to us to make sure that, you know, the individuals that are coming into our program are the right fit. And I think there's lots of ways to connect with us and to engage with us. And yes, we realize some individuals are not local and maybe it's not real easy to come and visit campus. But of course, if you are local, definitely come in to visit campus. We have have class visit options, we have um, open house events, uh, we have receptions, and we have receptions in a variety of different cities. So connecting with us is great. I mentioned the virtual office hours. You can also connect with an ambassador really easily. You can do that through our website. Um, and so I think engaging with us and really kind of getting a sense, are we a good fit for you? You know, we're assessing, are you a good fit for us? But also, you know, you it's really important to visit all the schools that you're applying to before you make your final decision. because. Often Oftentimes you in your mind have, you know, through all the research that you've done, you've, you've got this list of, okay, this is kind of my order, but after you visit, I guarantee, I mean, most likely it will shift a bit. And so, uh, but it's being able to, you know, again, be authentic in your application. Uh, that's something, you know, when we, we can see right through if you're not being authentic and being yourself. Don't feel like you've got to you know, you read a lot of blogs, you, you, you're kind of in my mind, well, I think this is what they want me to say. I think this is what they want to hear. Well, don't do that. I mean, we really want to 
uh, get to know you as a person and you know what your story is and you know why you know the jobs that have led you you know to want this MBA and how you know kind of your research in the MBA how that's led you to want this specific goal and why you think Goy's Wet is the right fit and so I think it's through all these you know, the application, but also visiting and engaging, um, you know, again, you know, it's very easy to connect with us, and I encourage you to do that. So, Nicole, we're looking for students that are the right fit for, for us, but it's mm -hmm. also important that we're the right fit for you. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about um, that, what that meant for you and how you kind of discovered Goizueta as a right fit school um, throughout the application process? Yeah, so as Libby mentioned, there's a lot of great on-campus opportunities and I took advantage of almost all of them. Um, I went to the full-time Insight Day, um, which was a great opportunity for me to actually see a class live, which was great. Um, I met with an ambassador, as she talked about. Um, I did an on-campus interview, and I went to the Women's Engage Conference, which is in Atlanta. If you live here, it's a really great opportunity as well to, um, if you're a woman, to meet other women in the school. Um, but I really thought that that personal touch of coming on campus and meeting people allowed me to see myself in current students and really distinguished Goizueta from other schools for me, where I felt a personal connection to a lot of students. And then when I came back on when school started, I felt like I had friends that were second years from my experience of being here for the past year and really just immersing myself in Goizueta. Um, and also Welcome Weekend, um, if and when you're accepted, is a really great opportunity to come on campus, even if you don't live in Atlanta, fly to Atlanta and meet your potential, hopeful, current cl um, future classmates. And that's another great opportunity as Libby mentioned to see yourself somewhere and meet your classmates um, and really feel if you feel a connection with them so all those opportunities um, really distinguish Goy's Weta for me. Awesome all right so we're gonna now move on to recommendation letters um, they are um, obviously a requirement of the application and Libby can you talk a little bit about you know advice tips around who should who they should ask for a recommendation? Um, maybe the timeline, giving them some time to formulate a recommendation. What that process looks like? Definitely. So we require two recommendations, and you do have a third optional uh, if you're interested. Uh, but for the recommendations, you definitely want to think about you know someone from your professional experience. Uh, we do not want to have a faculty member. We're interested in someone that has managed or supervised you, that has really worked closely with you, can talk about you know, your you know, career potential and the success that you've had, really the impact that you've made within your company or your organization. So I think it's key to uh, definitely kind of identify these individuals and then have a conversation with them, sit down with them, and you know, just kind of share why you're doing the MBA and why at Goizueta. And you know, definitely highlight some of your accomplishments over the past year that you feel will be important for them to make sure that they include. I think that uh, you know, we know they're busy, they've got a lot going on, and we want uh, them to have the information readily available to be able to write substantive things about you and provide examples. Uh, so I think that you want to have that conversation if you get any sense that they don't have the time or uh, you know you want to ask someone else and I think too you want to end with uh, you know are you going to give me a positive recommendation and you want to confirm that because I think that that's that's important. So I think that you know we're more interested in someone that has you know really knows you uh, rather than you know you trying to get the CEO of the company or um, you know, we're, we're more interested in an individual that can, as I've mentioned, really talk about um, your accomplishments and how you've, you know, succeeded and how you'll be able to, to meet the goals that you've set before yourself. So I think that that's um, most important. And um, I think that it's, you know, the recommendations, it's this additional piece that you have an opportunity to choose these individuals. Um, and I think that it's, it's definitely, you want to take some time uh, thinking about who's going to be best. And again, professional recs are uh, what we prefer. So you mentioned two required and there's a third optional. Mm -hmm. uh, um, what if someone wanted, had five people? Nope, limited to three? Yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> that, no, it's a good question. And I think that, you know, we do want you to use our forms. Uh, you know, we prefer that. But, 
you know, I think three is, is enough. I mean, if you feel that there's a fourth that you really want to submit, I mean, that is okay to do. I think also, you know, there can be maybe an alum that you know that would like to send something in on your behalf. Well, they can just send an email, you know, to me or one of my colleagues, and we can, you know, upload that information into your file. So if you do have a connection to Goizueta, you know, through an alum or maybe a current student or something, you know, they can definitely send information in on your behalf, and it doesn't have to be in a formal way. It can be just through, as I mentioned, through email, and that's something that we can upload to your file. We welcome that uh, information. So, and I think that sometimes with the thinking of a, like, you know, two are required and then you've got this optional, um, you know, it may be, you know, that third optional could be some, someone that you, maybe you're really involved in the community and you want to have that individual talk about what you've done. Um, that can be a great option for a third optional um, essay. I mean, recommendation. Recommendation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Um, Nicole, who did you choose to uh, submit recommendations on your behalf, and um, what was that process like when you uh, asked them for the recommendation? Yeah, so I picked two different types of people that um, I worked with prior to coming to business school. One was um, a senior manager that was on my project who I felt like could give, <clears throat> could give really good um, professional background on me as a leader, um, how my clients viewed me, how I was as a team member, and the quality of work that I was providing. Um, and they were my current senior manager. And I felt, you know, as I talked to people before I applied, it was really important to have that person be as close to today as possible, just so that you get a really good understanding of how you are today. Um, and the other person that I picked, and my former employer, we had career counselors. And this person was more of a personal relationship. They were more biased towards you know, my career progression and me as an individual. And I picked her as my second because I thought that it'd be good to have a balance of someone who saw me as a professional and someone who also worked with me professionally, but was more of a personal relationship and could speak to me um, and some of my core values and my ethics, um, things like honesty, integrity, drive, that maybe are not as obvious to my senior manager who was on my project because they were talking to me more behind the scenes outside of project work. And so I thought that those two combined um, were a really good balance of just um, being able to see the whole package of who I was. Awesome. One addition, please. Uh, we do uh, accept the GMAC recommendation form. So there are, um, you know, individuals that have submitted uh, through. It's kind of a, a recommendation that your recommender can do that you could send to multiple schools. So that is something that we do accept, and that's a question that we receive. So if you are interested in having your recommender do one recommendation and then you can submit it to a multiple schools, you'll just want to check to see if the schools you're applying to accepts it. But we do. All right. So let's transition now and talk a little bit about campus visits. So Nicole, you've already mentioned that you visited campus several times, different types mm -hmm. of events. You really got to know um, the folks here, staff and faculty, but also students mm -hmm. and make connections. Um, talk to me about, about that, the events that you came to, what you learned from them, who you met. Yeah, so I, my most memorable um, experience on campus was full-time Insight Day where I got to sit in on a marketing class. Um, and what really shocked me about that marketing class was marketing was so much more than I had ever thought it was. Um, and it was more about consumer behavior and just things that I had never thought about. And I remember sitting in that class and listening to all the classmates um, bringing these unique perspectives from backgrounds that were just so diverse and thinking, oh my gosh, I have so much to learn. And that was what really just opened my eyes to what business school could do for me. Um, and then outside of that, it was just really getting lunch with current students um, and talking to them at the Engage conference, just about their experience, the professors that they had, and you know, everything was just resoundingly positive. And so there was no moment in my application process that I thought, huh, I don't know if I wanna go to business school just because of the positive experience that I had both on campus um, and talking to um, current students because I think that their perspective is really important because you will be in their shoes um, soon after you apply. Terrific. And Libby, from your perspective, um, what's it like on your side of the, the house, right? Um, getting to meet prospective students when they come to campus and engage with them. Well, we um, love to meet candidates throughout the process. I think it's, 
you know, an opportunity for us to, you know, have some initial conversations with you and address any, uh, you know, questions or concerns that you have about your particular situation. I think sometimes, you know, when you come to events on campus, you're able to interact with admissions, but also, you know, our colleagues that are running the program, our associate dean of the program, as well as our career management center colleagues. And so it's a kind of a, a nice opportunity because you can come and you can get a variety of questions answered. So I think that's definitely a benefit. And, you know, you can also come for individual, you know, class visit. And, you know, I think we see some students that will come for an event, a formal event, but will also come for a class visit. You can go online, you can schedule that yourself. You can pick the class you want to come to. You can also have a lunch and a tour on the same day. So it's nice to have more of a kind of one-on-one -on -one experience with a current student that will, you know, host you and take you to class. You can, you know, meet the professor. Uh, so there's definitely um, a number of ways to engage with us. We also travel around the world uh, for MBA events. We've done a lot of those already, but we do have many more to come through the fall. So definitely check out our schedule. And if we're going to be in a city near you, uh, we've got lots of events, receptions in New York and D.C. and L.A. Um, I know we're doing some women's events and those you know some of those cities as well so uh, definitely check out our schedule and come meet us so. so we've already addressed the major components of the application process um, I guess the next question is when should I apply mm -hmm. right so we have several rounds um, mm -hmm. and I know on the the website we indicate um, some round deadlines for international applicants mm -hmm. or scholarship consideration mm -hmm. But is it better to apply uh, in a particular round um, to get it in early, or you know, should I wait longer? Really give my essays more time? What's your advice? Good. So you want to apply when you feel that your application is at its best. So I think that's what's most important. You know, if you feel that you know, hey, you're pushing towards trying to do round one, but you know, maybe you'd like to take you know, the, the test again, the GMAT or the GRE again, uh, or you'd like to work on your essays a bit more, or, you know, maybe with your recommendation, uh, you know, they're, you're not sure if they're going to get it in time, you know, you, you know, that's another tip is be sure to give your recommenders plenty of time so that when they can meet the deadline date, because it is important to have all your materials in by that deadline date. So we do take, you know, a few days to kind of gather all the information up to complete your file, but you will want to submit everything uh, by the deadline date and we do have four rounds so our first is in October and then we have one in November and then January and then we have our final deadline in March so you want to apply um, you know when you feel your application is at its best I think that with round one when thinking about round one you it's important to apply to all your programs at a similar deadline date so that you're getting decisions at about the same time and then you have to commit to the school about the same time. So for example, in round one, you're going to apply in October, you're going to get a decision at the end of November, you're going to have to commit to coming to Goizueta, you know, in December uh, to make your commitment and so it's helpful that you apply to all your other schools in round one as well uh, because, you know, you these deposits that you pay to uh, confirm your enrollment are, are large. So ours is a $2,000 deposit. So then there's round two. Uh, we encourage individuals, uh, international students, as well as interested students in the one year, you know, if that's your primary program of choice, to apply by round two, uh, just because that program starts in May each year. Um, and then for international students, being able to process those applications, we do some interview uh, trips uh, in the new year. And uh, so it's nice that we can review those candidates in round two to then offer those uh, interview opportunities. Um, but round three, you know, is completely okay for international students as well as one-year students that, uh, you know, we will completely consider your application if you apply in round one, two, or three. Uh, round three is our scholarship deadline, so if you're interested in scholarship opportunities, we do have some nice scholarship uh, available uh, for candidates, international as well as domestic students are considered for scholarship. There's no additional application. You just submit your application and uh, you will be automatically considered. And uh, you know, we, you know, scholarships range from 20% up to 100%. Of course, 100% scholarships are extremely competitive, but uh, you know, a good number of our students uh, receive some type of scholarship. So you all are here, it's September, you're listening to this web chat about the admissions process. Do not wait till round four to apply. So uh, round four is our last round. Oftentimes over the past several years, there's been very limited spots available 
Uh, so, and it's past our scholarship deadline. If you apply in round four, um, the likelihood of receiving a scholarship is very slim. So, so apply round one, two, or three, but ultimately you want to submit uh, when your application is at its best. Nicole, um, when did you decide to apply? What round were you in? Um, how long did you spend on the application process? Yeah, so I, I applied round two um, for the exact reason that Libby mentioned. I felt like I was ready by round two, but I made the round two deadline my, you know, nothing past that because I wanted just to find out and be able to, I'm a planner, so I just wanted to know um, by January if I was in, where I was in, all of that. Um, I wanted to make sure that I felt good about my GMAT score, um, which I think is a big piece of the application that you just want to, I, I wanted to feel strong about. And I wanted to give myself enough time to really give my recommenders um, enough time to give their answers um, and do my essays. Um, I think, I, I mean, end to end, I spent a, a while on my application, um, a few months end to end, but you're not always working on them um, every day. Um, but definitely take the time and go back to things and revisit them um, if, you have, if you have the time to do that. But definitely I would recommend, um, as Libby mentioned, um, by round three would be, be the best. And just to note, we do, we have four rounds where a lot of schools just have three. Mm -hmm. And so we've kind of had this November deadline that not a lot of schools have. So just kind of keeping that in mind. Sometimes when people hear round three, um, that's our January deadline, they're like, oh, that's too late, you know, because a lot of other schools, their round three is actually their March deadline. So uh, we do have the four rounds um, and, you know, definitely, uh, you know, encourage you to do the January. So a uh, question came in, um, does the, the GMAT score or TOEFL scores, do they need to be received by the deadline to make the application complete? They do. So, you know, by, you know, October 5th, you're going to want to have your, uh, you know, test scores submitted and that we've received those. And as I mentioned, we do take a few days, you know, once we've received your application to look at all the different components that you've submitted and there'll be a checklist that you'll be able to look at uh, to see, you know, you'll get notification when your application is complete and if there is a missing item and that gives you the opportunity to follow up. Um, when it comes to test scores, uh, the GMAT we can get pretty quickly. It takes, you know, around five days, business days, to receive the official GMAT score. A GRE can actually take up to 20 days. So, you know, you need to plan a little bit differently. We accept either test. Uh, we uh, are open to either, but you do want to think about timing-wise. Um, you know, you'll need to take the GRE. Uh, if you're kind of coming up against the deadline, you'll want to take the GRE a bit earlier so that your official score will be in by the deadline. A couple more questions. Um, so. Uh, Daniel's asking, is there a difference between the scholarships offered for the two-year MBA versus the one-year MBA? And then we had another related question coming in about um, when are scholarship notifications sure. sent out? So we look at two-year and one-year, you know, if you, let's say you get admitted to both the two-year and the one-year, your scholarship offer is typically going to be the same for either the two-year or the one-year. It's, it's rare that it would vary. Uh, and then you get your decision at the time of your admission. So when you're offered uh, admission into Goizueta, you'll be informed at that same time if you've received a scholarship. Uh, another one coming in, how does Goizueta confirm that, uh, how do we confirm that Goizueta has received a GMAT score? So, you know, if you have sent it to us, if you request it, I think, you know, you're, you can pretty much guarantee it's going to be to us in about, you know, five at the latest eight days. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, once you submit your application, then we will start to gather the components that you've submitted, and then we will share with you a checklist. And so you can look at that time. If it happens to be missing, then that's something that you'd want to follow up on. But I think you can feel pretty confident that if you've requested it, um, you've paid to request it to come to us, that we will get it. So, All right. Uh, a few questions related to interviews. Um, if the interview slots on the open interview slots are currently full, what recourse do they have? Are there options available later? Do they wait to be notified? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, interview spots do fill up. And, uh, and so if, if there's not a time that's available to you, unfortunately, um, you know, we may not be able to accommodate your request. You can always uh, reach out to us by email and see if it's possible. Um, but yes, we do encourage students to sign up as soon as possible because they do fill up. So we're, you know, we're talking about a week and a half out now. Right. Um, and, uh, and so um, we have limited spots. 
Okay, and then a question came in about um, interviews in any European countries. You do a lot of travel overseas. What are the options for international applicants? Sure, so we do not do any interview trips uh, in Europe. Uh, so in that situation, uh, you would apply and then we would review your application and then we would offer you an interview. And you know you can always come to campus, uh, but realize that may not be uh, doable. So you would um, opt to do the web uh, interview. Okay, and then Another question about the GMAT, I think we, we address this. Um, your GMAT just needs, score needs to be submitted um, by the, the round, deadline round that you're applying in. Okay. All right, um, let's move on to some admissions faux pas. So we want to make sure that we're giving them the best tips possible, that they have the best application possible. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the do's and don'ts? You've done this for quite a while. I'm, I'm sure you have some yeah. things you could share. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that, you know, this doesn't happen very often. I mean, I, th I think I've talked about some of these through our conversation. You know, I think what's most important is to, to be authentic and be yourself, be sincere. I think that, you know, we can really kind of see when someone's not being genuine and kind of just telling us what they think that we want to hear. So I think that's just not the way you want to go about doing it. And, you know, you're I know you're doing a lot of research and you're reading a lot of blogs and things. And so it's, you know, we're looking at candidates from a variety of different backgrounds and you know you know you may have unique work experience and you know we're looking and you know that's all of that is um, very important you know we like to have individuals from unique experiences it's really kind of fitting to see you know how your experiences have led you to want this degree and then you know in your research you know it's led you to want this degree for what reason why are you you know going to spend this invest this much time and resources into you know a full-time MBA program and learning more about you know kind of your goals and why we're a good fit so I think it's just really I mean the biggest tip is just to be yourself I think that you know again you know proof your essays you know it's 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 not that you know seeing another school in your essays is going to knock you out of being considered but it's just you know not not something that we'd like to see and you know I think you know, with the interview, a lot of times individuals are interested in getting feedback. Well, you know, during the interview, at the end of the interview, don't ask how you did in the interview. Um, this is not a place for feedback. Uh, you know, so there's some little things that, you know, you want to think about. Just be professional. I think it's also important to know that when you come to campus or you're interacting with us, everyone that you come in contact with ha can have input and provide input into your application. So from the person that, you know, greet you um, on campus in the admissions office at the front desk to students that you're having lunch with, uh, you know, all of us are, you know, looking, you know, at your uh, experience at Goizueta and your fit and can have input. And so I think that that's important to, to keep in mind as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nicole, did you, um, what steps did you take to ensure that your your essays and <laughs> application was up to par? A lot of proofreading and a lot of back and forths with my dad. I actually was going through emails for something and just the number of back and forths with my dad of just like edits to things and making sure that um, not only do you not have um, like issues with spelling and grammar and stuff, but also just making sure that your story is cohesive because I think it's very easy um, to see when someone's not genuine, but also to see when someone is genuine. I think that really um, was something that I wanted to come across and to make sure that people saw the connection, the end-to-end -end story, and that weaves through through everything. So I think that um, as long as you can have a nice story, you have no no grammar or anything, I think, it's, I think you're good. Okay. Um, application surprises or insights, Nicole. You've you've been through this. You've mm -hmm. done it. Um, you've are, you've shared a lot of great insights and tips. Is there anything that you that really surprised you that you learned about either Guizueta or yourself throughout the process? Yeah, I think a lot of things surprised me about Guizueta. I there was a lot about the actual school itself that I haven't really mentioned that I thought was phenomenal. Um, the Career Management Center, um, just your opportunities for growth and development there. I also really loved the, the structure of the academics here, that you take a core for the first semester and then you get to pick whatever you want for three semesters. It was really exciting for me as a career switcher that I can explore whatever I want to explore in an, in an environment where um, they want you to do that. 
And then from a personal standpoint, I you know, learned how to put myself out there and was really surprised at how when you put yourself out there and you really um, make an effort and come to the things on campus that it, it turns out turned out well for me. So I think um, that was something that surprised me both about the school and about myself. Okay. So we've had a few questions coming in about academic experience and GMAT scores. Um, Libby, can you talk a little bit about what we're looking for from those two aspects? Definitely. So with the GMAT and the GRE, I know I've already mentioned that we do accept either test. We don't have a preference. I think that you want to take the test that you feel you're going to do best in. Uh, we do look more, uh, we look at the total score, but we do uh, look a little bit more closely at your quantitative score. And so definitely focus on that. Uh, we're also able to look at any quant classes that you've had if you do quant work you know, within your, your job. But uh, we like to see above the 50th percentile in the quantitative section. It's not a minimum, but, uh, but we do like to see above the 50th percentile. And if you have less than that, um, definitely some, you, know, you may want to consider retaking the test. It's very common for us to see a student take the test more than one time. Uh, two to three times uh, is, again, uh, pretty common. And you know, I think that what we've seen lately is that students will you know, take the test, maybe they've taken it a couple times, but they just submit their highest score. And, and we encourage you to actually submit all scores. You know, let's say you took the GMAT and then you decided to opt to take the GRE. What is best if you actually submit you know, both scores or if you, you know, taking the GMAT multiple times to submit everything so we can see the full picture because we encourage students to try to fall within our GMAT ranges and you can see those ranges, the two year and the one year on our website uh, through our profile, um, but that is the 80% GMAT range and it's important to try to fall within that. Um, and if you're not, you know, take the test again. Uh, you know, I know it's not, you know, it's a, it can be an expensive test, it's not a fun test, but I think that uh, showing that you, um, you know, are trying to improve your score um, is helpful for the committee to see. Um, the last thing you want is, uh, you know, to submit only one score and then let's say you end up on the wait list and we're giving you wait list feedback and we say, oh, we'd like you to take the test again and you share with me, oh, I've taken it several times, I just submitted the one score. Well, that's helpful because if you've taken the test three or four times and you've scored in a similar way, then that's probably your score you know we're not going to see much improvement so it is helpful to submit everything and you know we're again the the test score really predicts how you're going to perform in the core and as Nicole mentioned you know we do have this front-loaded core it's pretty intense we have uh, the first semester is a 15 week semester all the rest are 12 weeks but you're doing all the core classes within 15 weeks. We actually start our two-year program at the end of July, so important to know uh, that we, we say the fall, but it's actually summer. And, uh, and so it's two weeks of onboarding, and then you've got a 15-week semester. And similar to the one year, you've got two, we start in May and two weeks of onboarding, and then you've got um, you know, the core in the summer. So I think that you know, that's what we're trying to predict, how you're going to perform um, in, in the core, and can you handle the rigor um, of our academics. Um, and then, you know, with the remaining semesters, you have just electives, which I think students find really valuable to be able to take electives before they've done their internship um, or just have, you know, a good, you know, in the one year you've got 10 electives, in the two year you've got up to 15 electives that you can take in our program. So this front loaded core is um, students really enjoy. But with the test scores, I think that, you know, just preparing, um, we're also going to look at your academics, your you know, undergraduate degree. Uh, we'll be looking at the courses that you've taken, where you went to school, your course load. Uh, we realize that you may have been working while you were in undergrad, so these are things that we definitely can take into consideration. We will also look at any other coursework that you've had. So if you've taken courses uh, since college, uh, you will want to submit all the information or if you've received uh, an additional degree, uh, you'll want to submit all transcripts from any courses that you've taken or degrees that you've received. So speaking of degrees, um, we had a, a couple questions coming in about if I already have a uh, master's in management or another master's degree, am I still eligible for the Guizueta MBA? 
Yeah, if you have a master's in something, like a master's in management, if it's not a master's in business administration, um, because there are kind of one-year master's in management programs or master's in finance things, um, we can definitely still consider you for the MBA, but I think you do want to share. Oftentimes, you know, students will do those one-year kind of master's programs right after undergrad, and then they've gotten some work experience. We do require full-time work experience, so we are going to look at how much experience you have when you enroll. And, uh, and so we're looking, you know, most students have on average, it's about five years, but the range is three to seven years. So it's important to try to fall within um, that, that range of work experience. So for someone who maybe they're, they're finishing up undergrad or they just graduated, they're really just dipping their toe into the workforce, what advice do you have for those folks who know, I want to get my MBA? Go take a test. Go take the GMAT or the GRE because it is valid for five years. And after, you know, coming out of undergrad, you know, you're, you're used to taking tests. You're, you know, kind of in that test mode. And I think that that's the biggest piece of advice I can give you is go ahead and take the test. I mean, likely you're going to go within five years. And, uh, you know, when you apply and you submit your application, you know, if you, your application is complete when that test score is valid, you're able to, you know, submit it and uh, can be considered. So, that's, uh, you know, you definitely want to get the full-time work experience. The experience, as I mentioned, you know, it's, uh, it's important for a couple of reasons. One is to be able to contribute in the classroom and to be able to be able to participate actively and be engaged. But also many of our recruiters have the expectation that you have pre-MBA experience. So they're expecting you to have several years of experience when they're recruiting you once you're here as a student for the internship or for the full-time job. So um, experience is, is definitely key um, for our process. Okay. So this is a little off the application process topic, um, but I thought it was a, a great request. Um, and the request was for you, Nicole. They'd love to hear you describe a regular day in the life of a two-year MBA student. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm in, I'm in the core right now, which um, both Libby and I have alluded to. So um, it's pretty class heavy right now. Um, we have typically three classes a day. Each class is an hour and a half long. Um, so I have that, and then recruiting has really picked up right now. So recruiting for internships, um, coffee chats with second years and alumni to hear about what they do, their companies, going to company presentations at night, all while doing homework, which is a very um, foreign concept after being out of school for a few years. Um, and then a lot of our work in this semester is team-based. So I have a team of five people that are in my section. Um, you take all of your classes the first semester with your section. And so we do a lot of work together during lunch. So a lot of lunch times with um, my five new best friends where we're doing project work um, and then doing a lot of just interview prep. Um, I'm actually going to a conference leaving today that a lot of my classmates are going to um, in Detroit to do some interviewing um, and recruiting. So it's a lot of school, um, recruiting, meeting new friends, doing fun things on the weekends. Um, but yeah, it's, it's jam-packed days, but it's, it's been really, really fun. Do you have any downtime, any social time, or is it work, work, work? Um, you know, social time with business school friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm also married, so there's, there's that, too. You, you definitely can carve out time. Um, and depending on your section, your classes start at 8 a.m. If they start at 8 a.m., um, you're done early, which is great. So you have some afternoon time, but they can also start later in the morning. So you can find times um, in the pockets of Monday through Friday to um, find time to to do whatever you need to do personal life, so. Okay, good, thank you for that insight. Yeah. Um, transitioning back then to the application process, uh, a few more questions came in. Um, one is about work experience, and if someone is self-employed, mm -hmm. um, you know, so taxed and all of that sort of thing, um, does that count as work experience? Definitely, I mean, we do have students that are working you know, on their own business. And uh, again, we look at work experience, a uh, variety of work experiences. So we have many that come from traditional you know, business careers, but we have individuals that are entrepreneurs. We have some that have been doing Teach for America that, have, that are engineers, that are in the military, that have been working in nonprofits. So it's, what's most important is the quality of the work experience, you know, the progression that you've shown, um, the initiative, what you've achieved. 
Uh, and that's you know something that we're going to gain through the application process, looking at your resume, doing the interview, hearing from your recommendations. So all types of work experiences are, are welcome um, to apply to our program. I would also add to that mm -hmm. that um, a lot of what you do in the first semester, which I alluded to, is team-based work where you have an assignment that five people are working on together. And a lot of times you just have to think about like, what is your perspective? And you can get that perspective from a lot of different places. You can get it from a typical corporate background. You can get it from being an entrepreneur. But that's what business school um, has been great for is that you're just working with people and you're in classes together where everyone just comes from a different experience. So I would just think through um, when you're applying, what is that perspective and how is it unique and how did you gain that perspective from whatever you did before business school. My small team of five people, we have someone who's in finance, someone in nonprofit, someone in um, supply chain, I was in consulting, and someone from Korea who runs a hotel. So um, a, lot of different, a lot of different backgrounds that all um, create a lot of cool insights and outcomes. That's terrific. Um, so we talked a little bit about day in the life and what the schedule looks like. Libby, this is, both of you can actually answer this question, but can students work full-time while completing a full-time no. MBA? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you are going to school full-time and this is your full-time job. Uh, you know, there is no time to do any additional work. Uh, it is really intense, uh, the academic side, but also, you know, we have the expectation that you're going to come and be involved and engaged. We have a number of clubs and organizations we want you to be involved in, take on leadership roles. We have an amazing leadership program here. So it is something that we're expecting you to do. Uh, this is your full-time job. And again, there's some social aspects too, uh, which you know, really rounds out your MBA experience. I think the only time I've seen is that you know, maybe um, at the end of your internship, uh, maybe the company you've worked with uh, wants you to do a few hours here and there. Uh, during your second year, you've got more flexibility, you're taking electives, you, know, you might be able to work it out to do a few hours in your second year, but uh, there is no way during your first year in the program, and it's, it's not really that feasible even in the second year. Yeah, and the other important thing that someone in my class actually asked during Welcome Weekend um, is that there's actually a two-week orientation before school starts. Um, this year it started on July 30th. I'm sure you could look it up online and find it, but um, you really do start that day, that Monday. Even though it's orientation, it's a full, full two weeks of um, being at school all day, every day. So I would just think about that if and when you're accepted to back out your timing um, to that first day of orientation, not the first day of classes. And on that note, you know, if possible, I mean, this is, you know, you're taking, you know, a lot of time to do this degree. And if you can take some time off before you start the program and uh, travel, visit with friends, um, I think that's important. And I don't know if that's something that you did. I did, but and it was the best <laughs> six weeks of my life. <laughs> So it's just to get kind of get recharged yes. and get ready uh, for because it, it's going to be nonstop. Yeah. Okay. And so so it sounds like if it's really important that someone needs to maintain a f full time employment, that their best option is really a part time or evening MBA program. Yeah, we have a part time evening. We also um, have executive programs, a weekend as well as a modular format. Uh, those uh, the executive programs does have the expectation with uh, to have a bit more experience, usually about eight years or more experience for executive programs. Uh, but our evening program has similar types of work experience as the full time program does. So definitely look at our other options uh, for you to consider at Goizueta. Okay. So I know we're running short on time. We have just a few minutes left, two minutes left. And um, we had a lot of questions that we didn't get to. So I apologize for that. Uh, up on the screen, you'll see um, both the website and our email address. We are always available and happy to answer any questions that you have. We have both our admissions team as well as student ambassadors. Right, we have the virtual office hours that you can sign up online. If you have some quick questions that you want to get addressed, uh, you can email us. You can connect with an ambassador if you're interested in talking to a student uh, with a particular background or someone that has career goals similar to you. Uh, you can request that. It's just a small form that you complete to, to make that connection. Okay, so lots of options to connect. We also have a lot of upcoming events, um, both uh, in, in the Atlanta area, um, in the U.S., internationally. Mm -hmm. So we really advise you, go to the website, check it out, see if there's uh, an event in your area. 
we'd love to meet you. We'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Um, and a lot of great questions that came in around our leadership programs, our impact programs, around internships and career services. All great questions. We're out of time, though. <laughs> so um, please reach out, uh, either a virtual uh, information session or we have an email address on the screen here. We also have another upcoming web chat, which is Conquering the GMAT. Uh, you'll see it on the screen with the URL there. Please register for that. Lots of great tips um, to help you get ready for that GMAT and get that application in early. So with that, we're going to wrap up. Thank you for your time, and you will be receiving an email from us within the next week with a recording of this video. And we look forward to meeting you soon.